Murder Being Once Done by Ruth Rendell Read by George Baker When Wexford came downstairs, his nephew had already left for work, and the women, with fiendish gusto, were preparing a convalescence breakfast. It had been like that every day since he arrived in London. They kept him in bed till ten. They ran his bath for him. One of them waited at the foot of the stairs, holding out a hand in case he fell, a lunatic smile of encouragement on her face. The other, this morning it was his nephew's wife, Denise, presided over the dining-room table. Wexford viewed it grimly. Two biscuits apparently composed of sawdust and glue, a pat of unsaturated fat, half a grapefruit, black coffee, and, crowning horror, yoghurt. His own wife, trotting behind him from her post as staircase attendant, proffered two white pills and a glass of water. This diet, he said, is going to be the death of me. Oh, it's not too bad. Imagine if you were a diabetic as well. Oh, quoted Wexford, can hold a fire in his hand by thinking on the frosty Caucasus. He swallowed the pills and began to eat sour grapefruit under their solicitor's eyes. Where are you going for your walk this morning, Uncle Reg? He had explored the King's Road. He had stood at the entrance of Stamford Bridge football ground and had actually seen Alan Hudson. He had traversed every exquisite little Chelsea square and tramped through the antique market. They liked him to walk. In the afternoons they encouraged him to go with them, in taxis to the Natural History Museum and Brompton Oratory and Harrods. As long as he didn't tax his brain by asking a lot of questions, or stay up late, or try to go into pubs, they jollied him along. Where am I going this morning, he said. The embankment, to have a look at that statue. St. Thomas More, said Denise, who was a Catholic. Sir Thomas, said Wexford, who wasn't. Denise whisked away the unsaturated fat before Wexford could eat too much of it. And this afternoon, if it isn't too cold, we'll all go and look at Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. But it was bitingly cold and rather foggy, and he was glad of the scarf his wife had wrapped round his neck, although he didn't feel ill, only bored. There weren't even many people about this morning to divert him with their flowing hair, beads, medieval ironmongery, flower-painted boots and shaggy coats. The teeming young, who usually drifted past him, were this morning congregated in the little cafes with names like Friendly Frodo and the Love Conception. Theresa Street, where his nephew's house was, lay on the borders of fashionable Chelsea. He crossed the King's Road by the World's End and made his way towards the river. Sample complete. Ready to continue?